Hey guys, what's up everyone? Welcome back to a new video. As it is tradition on this channel, uh, as soon as there is a new release of Kali Linux, we are going to update our how to install Kali Linux uh, videos as well. And today we are going to update the how to install Kali Linux 2020.1 on a laptop uh, video using UEFI BIOS. I feel like I don't have or I, I don't want to make a new AFI and a legacy video because I think most modern laptops should be capable of running UEFI and it's the more secure choice anyway. So I want to cover legacy BIOS. Uh, so make sure your laptop has UEFI BIOS available before following this tutorial. Another thing I want to point out and mention more explicitly this time is a uh, warning that this is not a dual boot video and everything on your laptop's hard drive is going to be deleted and is not recoverable if you follow this tutorial. This is a destructive method to install Kali Linux. We're just going to use the one hard drive that you have available in your laptop and if you have Windows installed on your laptop and you follow this method, your Windows installation will be gone and you will not be able to go back to Windows 10 or whatever Windows you have running on your laptop. This might seem a bit ridiculous to some of you, but you won't believe how many comments and messages I get on YouTube after somebody followed my tutorial and all their data is gone and they can't go back to Windows 10. Even there was a disclaimer in each of every one of my videos, so I just wanted to make that more explicitly. If you don't know what you're doing, uh, please don't follow this instruction. Uh, you might lose all of your data. That's the bottom line of the warning here. Okay, with that out of the way, we can get right started and the first thing we are going to do is we are going to download Rufus. Uh, we need this tool to create a bootable USB drive so we are able to make a bootable version of Kali Linux. Uh, go to rufus.ie and uh, scroll down a bit until you find download and click on Rufus 3.8 to download it. And next, go to kali.org, click on downloads and download the Kali Linux 64-bit installer. It, obviously, if you have a 32-bit system, go for the 32-bit installer. But most of you should be running a 64-bit system, therefore choose the 64-bit version. Well, once you have both of those things downloaded, open up Rufus and uh, make sure you have a USB drive plugged into your computer with sufficient space. I think 8 GB should do. I have a 16 GB stick in there. Then click on select. Here go to your downloads folder and then select the Kali Linux 2020.1 installer amd64.iso file and click on open. You can change the name of the volume if you want it, but you don't need to. Just go ahead and click on start. Make sure the correct USB drive is selected here and make sure that you are aware of everything on the USB drive will be deleted. Click on start. Here there is a newer version of SysLinux available. Uh, then click on yes. And then it's important you choose right in the D image mode. That's a crucial step here, otherwise the installer will fail at some point. Click on OK to accept that all data is going to be destroyed. Uh, this is also fine. Click on OK and let the image write. And once this is done, unplug your USB drive from your computer and plug it into your laptop. Okay guys, so as you know, this is not the easiest to film this on an actual laptop. I'll do my best, I hope the quality is sufficient. Uh, but I just basically uh, put my USB drive into my uh, laptop and I brought up the boot menu. And to bring up the boot menu, you can simply Google the name of your laptop model and a boot menu and then you should get an instruction on how to get in there. I have a Lenovo notebook and there it is pressing the F12 key while the laptop is starting. Then you should end up in a menu, in a menu like this or something similar. Okay, so next we are going to select our USB drive to boot up the Kali installer. And as I have said, uh, there have been a couple of changes made to 2020.1. Uh, one of them is the installer is leaner now, but the other thing is, I'll just went through the installation actually, I have to re-record this, because I haven't uh, connected my laptop to the internet um, 
And what happened then was it just installed the base install of Kali Linux without a, a desktop environment. So I ended up with an installation with the command line only. That means that you have to have a internet connection available as of now. Uh, that means you need to plug a network cable into your laptop or in a later point on this uh, tutorial you can connect to a Wi-Fi network during the installation. So let's see if we can get it installed now. You want to select graphical install and I think that's going to change eventually uh, later but uh, as of now that's how it is. Okay, for language uh, you can leave it on English and then uh, you can select your location or you don't, it's up to you. Then you select the keyboard layout, I'm gonna choose the German one here. There we go. And now it's detecting and mounting the installation media. And if you get an error here, you are probably, you haven't probably selected uh, the image mode while writing the image with uh, Rufus. So in case you get an error here, go back uh, through the process of creating a bootable USB device, this time selecting the image mode. Okay. Let's see, now it's detecting the network hardware, which should be fine now because now I'm connected to the network. And uh, there are some of your hardware needs uh, some additional firmware and that looks like the Wi-Fi driver so I leave that on yes and I click on continue. And I'm not sure if it's gonna find it, last time I went through that it didn't find it. But maybe, yeah it doesn't find it actually. So uh, I'm going with no here. This is a bit weird because this was still working with Kali 2019.4, I have an older Lenovo laptop here. But nevertheless, uh, it should include the Wi-Fi drivers here, but it doesn't, so... In case you come over that, uh, just go ahead and plug in a LAN cable and you should be fine. Uh, then you can change the hostname if you want to, I leave it on default, which is Kali. Uh, then you can select the domain name if you want to or not. Click on continue. Full name for the uh, new user, that is... Uh, first and last name, I'll just call that Kali and Root, whatever. It does not really matter, you don't need to put a name there at all. And then uh, username for your new user account, which is a low privilege user. I would not recommend leaving it on Kali, choose any other username you want and select a more secure password than I have here. Okay, there we go, continue. And uh, then configure the clock, do whatever you want here. Just choose your proper time zone. And let's see, now it should be installing uh, the main system in a second after we choose uh, which hard drive we want to use for that. So we choose guided, use entire disk. Then we want to select our SSD, which obviously is the larger one. The one below here is the USB drive click on continue, then you want all files in one partition, click on continue. And uh, last chance, uh, be aware again, if you choose yes here, your hard drive will be wiped and you won't be able to go back to your previous operating system. If you are aware of that, click on continue and click on yes uh, to change, to write the changes on the disk. There we go. Now it's writing some stuff there and after that, uh, we will be able to choose our desktop environment and also choose the tools we want to install. Alright, if you use a proxy you can enter that information here now, otherwise click on continue and now it's updating apt and in a second we will be able to choose a desktop environment. There we go. So the thing that has, that has changed from the previous versions of Kali Linux is that now you are able to select which uh, desktop environment you want to use during the installation. So you can choose between XFCE, GNOME and all the other ones uh, during the installation here and the particular uh, desktop environment that you choose will be installed after that. The same goes for tools. You can now choose which tools you want to install. You can leave it as default like you had it in the past with all the default Kali tools. You can install Kali Linux without any tools or you can install Kali Linux with uh, a couple of other options which I will show you in a second. And there we go. So this is exactly what I said. You can choose the desktop environment here. 
Uh, you can choose GNOME, KDE, LXDE, MATA, and I'll just leave it on XFCE for now. And then this is tick per default. And then you can choose which kind of tools you want to install. So you can choose light, a uh, base system with no pen testing tools or the top 10 only or default, the recommended tools, large, all of the tools, uh, everything, almost all tools, whatever is the difference between those. I couldn't find it out on the Kali website or Kali documentation as of yet. There is no indication of which tools are going to be installed, whether which one of those options you choose. And then you can also install uh, tools by purpose here, so you have a lot of options. Choose whatever you want. If you are not sure what to choose, leave it on default. You are perfectly fine with that. For the uh, purpose of this demonstration, I'm just, to save some time, I'm just going to go for a light. Uh, because I don't care about tools, I'm gonna wipe this drive again anyway. Okay, so whatever you have chosen, click on continue next and now the tools and the desktop environment that you have chosen will be installed. And this can take, uh, depending on what you selected, if you select large with everything, it can take quite long. I have spent, uh, I think, 25 minutes the last time I have tried to install that. And there we have it, the installer just completed and if all went well, we will be able to boot into Kali now. Okay, let's see. Let's go through it together. And as I've said the last time I've did this, I ended up with a base system of Kali because I haven't had a network cable connected. But I'm uh, positive that this time we will be ending up in uh, a desktop environment, hopefully. Let's see. Yeah, that looks much better. Okay. I'm a bit relieved because those videos take a long time to do. Okay, so log in with your credentials that you have set up during the installation. And if everything went well, we should uh, be in Kali Linux right there. Okay, that's it. And uh, the first thing, or the only thing I'm actually going to show you is sudo apt update and end sudo apt upgrade tech y and this is what you want to run first and that's it that's how to install kali linux 2020.1 on a laptop and if you don't know where to go from here look in the upper right corner of the video right now there is my video on the top things to do after installing kali linux if you don't know where to go from here and also, if you search through my channel, there are a lot of other videos like uh, how to get started with cybersecurity or how to use Kali Linux to do certain things. So just look through my channel and uh, I'm sure you'll find something of interest that if you're interested in penetration testing and learning how to hack. That being said, guys, I thank you very much for watching this video. And if you liked it, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe to my channel so I'll be able to continue producing videos for you guys. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye.